We're going to start off our study of calculus with a quick review of the pre-calculus concepts that are going to be very helpful as we get to later calculus concepts. And as I start each of my lessons, I like to start with a question that we're trying to answer and understand more deeply. So for our very first question, we're going to look at the question of what is a function? And this is really an important concept to mathematics. Probably one of the most, most important concepts of all of mathematics is what is a function? A function can be thought of simply as a rule that maps elements of the domain to elements, actually better said, to an element in the range. Kind of a visual representation of what this looks like is we're going to have all of these things called the domain. Those are our input values, numbers we start with. It could be 3, 2. It could even be a variable x. And then over here, we have all of these elements. These are our output items called the range. And what the rule will do is map the domain to an element in the range. Maybe the range has 4, 6, maybe 2x. And so the function, which we usually write f of x in function notation, says, OK, we're going to map the 3 to the 6. We'll map the 2 to the 4. We'll map the x to the 2x. And you see every element in the domain is mapped to one element in the range. That's basically what a function does. Now, usually, we don't represent it in that visual mode. We might represent it with points. And these points are usually expressed as an x-y pair, where the x is the domain, and the y is the range. So for example, if I have a list of points like 2 comma 1, 4 comma 3, 6 comma 1, and 8 comma 7, if I wanted to list the domain of this function, this rule, the domain is all the x's or the inputs that are used in this function. They are 2, 4, 6, and 8. If I want to list the range, those are all the outputs, or the y's, which we have 1, 3, 1, and 7. We don't need to repeat the 1. We've already said it. So for the range, we just need the list of numbers 1, 3, and 7. Let's do one more example using points. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to do 0, 4. 1, 6, 2, 4, and 1, 5. And with this relationship, we can again identify the domain or all the x values, 0, 1, 2. And we don't have to repeat the 1. 0, 1, and 2 are the domain. The range then is all the y values, 4, 6, don't have to repeat the 4 and 5. But there's a problem with this one that we need to make sure we note is different in B than in A. Notice an input of 1. 1 gets mapped to 6 in the second point, but 1 also gets mapped to 5 in the, third, in the fourth point. Well, we can't 
have two answers for one input value. And so we can't have a number that's mapped to two different values. So this one, we would actually say, is not a function. The first example, notice each number is mapped to a number. 2 is only mapped to 1. 4 is only mapped to 3. 6 is only mapped to 1. 8 is only mapped to 7. Now, two of them are sent to the number 1. We see 2 goes to 1 and 6 goes to 1. That's OK if we have the same answer twice. What we can't happen have happen is one input like the number 1 in part b, is mapped two different directions to 6 and 5. We can't have two y's for a single x. So that was points. As you might imagine, we could convert those points into a graph and represent a function as a graph, where the x's on the graph represent the domain. And the y's on the graph represent the range. So if I have an example of a function here, let's go 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And let's map a point here at negative 2, positive 2. We'll map a point at negative 1, negative 1, 1, comma 1, and 3, comma 0. And we're just going to connect these points in kind of this smooth curve. We can talk about the domain and the range of this function, of this graph. Domain is all the x values, or the inputs. And if you notice this graph, if we were to shove it down onto the x-axis, hits every number between negative 2 and positive 3. So we're going to say the domain is the range of numbers from negative 2 to 3. And actually, I'm going to use a square bracket because we actually hit negative 2 and we hit positive 3. So from negative 2 to 3, we probably don't need the plus, becomes my domain. If we want to know the range, we squish the graph onto the y-axis. And you notice if we squish the graph onto the y-axis, the graph seems to cover everything from a positive 2 down to a negative 1. And so the range of this graph goes from negative 1 up to positive 2. And that way, we can express the domain and range of our graph based on what x and y values are used. Let's do one more example. Let's go 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to put a point at 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 0, and negative 1, or negative 2 negative 1. And if I connect these in a circle, we can talk about the domain and the range of this relationship. Notice if we shrink onto the x's, the x values that are used range from negative 2 to positive 2 inclusive. So negative 2 to positive 2 becomes our domain. And if we shift onto the y's, we seem to cover all the y's from negative 3 up to positive 1. But again, we have a problem with this graph like we did with example b from the points. If we take an input of x equals 1, the graph goes up and hits a point, and the graph goes down and hits a point. We have two outputs. Negative 1 is mapped to two different values. That's not allowed. 
So this second example is also not a function. Because the, a vertical line, any input, should, like in example A, only go to one value, not two values, like we have in example B. All right, we've talked about points. We've talked about graphs. As you know, graphs can be represented with an equation or an expression. And that takes us to the fourth way that we can represent a function. And that is what we're going to call function notation, where we will have this thing called f of x. And they really can be any letter. f is actually the name of the function. And it represents the range. And then the x is the input variable. So sometimes you might see v of t, v is the name, and t is the input variable. We can change the letters. But what's important to note is this does not represent f times x. This is a notation that means f of x, which allows us to express several different situations. Let's try an example. Let's say f of our variable x is equal to 3 times x plus 2. Now, I could use that to try and find certain values. Like maybe I want to find f of negative 4. Well, what that means is I'm going to my function, which is 3x plus 2, and we're going to replace the x with the negative 4 that's being plugged into the function. So we're going to have 3 times x, which is negative 4, plus 2. Well, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, plus 2 is negative 10. In fact, we don't have to just plug numbers in. We can plug variables in, maybe f of a. Now in 3x plus 2, we're going to have 3 times a goes into the function, plus 2. And we can combine this and use variables and numbers. Let's say we want to find f of b plus 2. Well, that means we're going to take 3 times our variable. The variable is b plus 2 plus another 2. And we can do some simplifying here by distributing. So we get 3b plus 6 plus 2 and combine like terms to get 3b plus 8. But as you can see, we can plug in entire expressions like b plus 2 into a function. In fact, as we continue our study of calculus, we'll find we'll often input something like x plus h into a function. And when we do that, we still have the 3 times, and we replace the variable with the x plus h plus another 2. Well, simplifying by distributing, we'll end up with 3x plus 3h plus 2. Let's try another function and do much the same thing. But this time, we'll make the function a little more involved. Let's make the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x. And we're going to start by finding f of negative 2. Well, this time, we're going to the function f. But what we see is that the variable x appears in two places. That negative 2 is going to get plugged in for both of those values. So we'll have a negative 2 squared minus 3 times the negative 2. Well, negative 2 squared is 4, and negative 3 times negative 2 is plus 6. And so we end up with a positive 10. 
Again, we can plug variables in. We could find f of m. And that means we're going to plug m into the function. So now we have m squared minus 3 times m. Can't simplify that at all, so we'll leave it like that. And we can combine variables and numbers. Let's do f of n plus 1. Well, that means instead of x squared, we now have n plus 1 squared minus 3 times n plus 1. Simplifying that, we can do our squaring. Gives us n squared plus 2n plus 1. Don't forget the middle term when we square. We can't just square the pieces. Distributing the negative 3 gives negative 3n minus 3. Combining like terms, we have n squared minus n minus 2 for our simplified version. Again, a common one we'll see later in our study of calculus is x plus h. That means we're going to replace x squared becomes x plus h squared minus 3 times x, which becomes now x plus h. And we can go through much the same steps in order to simplify. So we end up with x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h. And I don't think we have any like terms there, so we'll stop with that. Now, sometimes it's advantageous as we're working with functions to take a function and figure out what the function's graph looks like. A graph is just a picture of the solutions. And so we're going to look at graphing functions, drawing a picture of the solutions. And one common way we do this is we just make a table of values. Maybe we're going to graph the function f of x equals x plus 2 squared. Well, to do that, we can make a list of our inputs x and our list of our outputs y to ultimately graph those points. So let's pick some values for x, maybe negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1. And if I plug these in for y, or plug these into f or of x for the x value, we end up with negative 3 plus 2 squared, which is negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 squared is a positive 1. And then we can take negative 2 plus 2 squared. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Squared is 0. Then we can plug in the negative 1 plus 2 squared. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Squared is 1. We can plug in 0. 0 plus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. And I think if we plug 1 in, it's going to get really big. 1 plus 2 squared becomes 9. And so now we can try and graph this function. Because we know that when x is negative 3, y is a positive 1. When x is a negative 2, y was 0. When x is negative 1, y is a positive 1. When x is 0, y is 4. And when x is 1, y turns out to be 9. And so if we start to connect these dots, we get a good picture of what all of the solutions to this function are going to look like. 
So a table of values works great to graph a function, get an idea of the shape. We don't always have to use a table, though. We can use our calculator. And we're going to do that to graph the function f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. So if we take our calculator, if we hit the y equals button, it'll bring us up a bunch of functions to graph. We want to graph the square root of x minus 2. I can hit second and the x squared to get the square root symbol and x minus 2. And then when I hit the graph button, we should get a good picture of what this looks like. And so what we see is it's starting over here at 2 comma 0 and coming up slowly. We could also figure out those exact points if we hit second table. Now, if there's already values filled in, we might have to ask the calculator for permission to put our own values in. To do that, we can hit second window, which gives us the table set. And you want to change the independent variable to ask. That allows you to pick what numbers get put in. So when I hit second table, we said it started over at 2. And then maybe I can plug in 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can see some points that it's starting to graph for us on the way up. So if we want to try and graph that. We had our first point on our graph at 2 comma 0. At 3, 1, there was another clear point. And then there was another point at 6 comma 2. And as we connect these dots in the shape of the graph, we do end up with a good idea of what the graph looks like. Let's go back and look at these two graphs and see if we can figure out their domain and range. With the first graph, we call that a parabola. The domain, you'll notice, is going on forever in all directions because of the arrows at the end. It's never going to stop. So the domain actually ends up being all real numbers. And we can use this fancy R. You can say all real numbers. You can say from negative infinity to positive infinity. The domain, though, is all real numbers. For the range, as we go over to hit the y-axis, what we see is the function's hitting all the y values that are above 0. So the range is going from, and we'll use a square bracket because it includes 0, all the way up forever to infinity. Let's look at our last example. Here, if I drop the graph down on the x-axis to see the domain, the domain, the lowest x, starts at 2 and goes off to infinity. And for the range, if I pull the graph back to the y-axis, it's going up forever. But it started at 0, going off to infinity. So that's a quick look review at what a function is. It's a rule mapping elements of the domain to elements of the range. We can express them with points, with graphs, with function notation. We want to get really good at this notation and this concept before we dive into some of our more involved concepts. So take a look at the homework assignment. Practice several of these before class. And I'll look forward to discussing them and some of their applications with you in more detail.